Hey guys, me again, and I'm going to talk about uh, winterizing again um, because there's been a few more things that have popped up that um, I feel like I should share if you're a newbie RVer and um, you just really want to educate yourself or learn from my mistakes. Either one's cool. Um, so it's really cold here in Kansas and uh, when we first got here we left our gray tank open to um, just flow out and we have this uh, like connection piece that goes to the sewage. We don't have a black tank so well okay we do have a black tank we don't use it because we have a composting toilet but um, we just have gray water uh, that runs to the, into the sewer and um, we just left it open the whole time. Well uh, Whenever you're RVing in a really cold place and it gets like below freezing, you're supposed to shut your gray valve. Um, so the water that is flowing from the tube that goes to your uh, that goes to the sewage doesn't freeze uh, while it's open. Let me tell you, it froze. We had our freeze. Uh, that little sewage line that was connecting our RV to the sewage, it totally froze uh, water because we left our gray tank open. So, lesson learned on that. Uh, keep your gray tank closed when it is winter time. Um, another lesson to learn along with that is we... <laughs> My husband is so tired. He works so much. Um, for, we're camping for Amazon, so we pretty much do everything. I fill up the propane tanks, I deal with, um, you know, the water hose, any issues with that, or any issues with our gray tank, and um, everything. I deal with everything. So, I wasn't even thinking, um, but the other night, uh, when my husband is at work, I smelled something like, like funky. Um, it wasn't a sewage smell, it was more like a gross, gross, dirty water smell. And I started running the water and stuff started coming back up in our tub. And um, I was kind of freaking out because I was like, oh man, we have a plumbing issue and now I'm going to have to get under the RV and fix this in the freezing weather and with my two little ones asleep. I'm gonna have to do this with a flashlight because there's no one else here. So I was really annoyed. Well, I went out with a flashlight and checked it out and um, long story short, I, th I realized that I forgot to um, empty my gray tank. So I'm just so not used to living in an RV sometimes that I forget that, that um, there are things that you have to do that you definitely don't have to worry about in a sticks and bricks house and that is for sure one of them. So I have been so busy and things are, have been a little bit chaotic especially since um, Christmas is next week and um, we're just we're really tired and we're not thinking too clearly sometimes and with the like list of things that I have to do uh, every single day uh, opening the gray tank was not on that list so lesson learned on that uh, as soon as I pulled that valve it was like an instant and I could hear it on the inside from the bathtub just go down and that was the issue um, and just learn from my mistake to open up your your valve at least every night or every two nights. Um, since we're a family of four, we probably use water a whole lot more than a person of one would. But you know, just kind of gauge it uh, to your own um, usage. So that was a lesson <laughs> that I learned real fast, and I took a mental note of that pretty quickly and I have remembered to empty the gray tank uh, religiously every night. 
uh, so that doesn't happen anymore. Um, but the winter here is still sucking pretty bad. We ran out of propane last night. Um, like, before my husband got off, gosh, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and I was really annoyed uh, because... I didn't fill up the propane tanks because they were, the co-op had been closed over the weekend, so I wasn't able to even go there. It wasn't a choice. Um, I would have switched the propane tanks at like a, a Walmart or something, but it is, it is just so much cheaper to go to the co-op and do that, and right now, uh, penny pinching at its best is what we're doing. We're really just trying to save um, every cent that we possibly can and paying like four extra bucks to swap a tank out uh, I don't know I just couldn't do it <laughs> so we accidentally ran out of propane last night and it was freezing in here it was awful again uh, thankfully the boys room of course was still really warm but like as soon as they opened up that curtain and stepped down into the bathroom it was like completely it was like good 10 degrees temperature at least 10 degrees it was so hot in their room my son my oldest son had actually taken off his shirt and just slept like that so um <coughs> running out of propane is, is still <laughs> an issue here or there so I actually wanted to buy a 30 pound tank just to have spare um, it's just not in our budget uh, so uh, if you can afford it I would totally recommend a uh, an extra tank for your RV um, it's always really good our neighbors over here they have an extra tank really wise uh, and I see them using it like that all the time. Anyways, um, we have these heaters going, these space heaters going like all the time still. So, and I'm still tripping the breakers whenever I try to cook in the morning. Uh, <clears throat> if I use uh, like our toaster oven, I use daily. And we have a new wave, which I use daily as well. And I use that to cook uh, toast and eggs and such in the morning and I just you can't have these heaters on whenever you're using those uh, appliances so it's just it's really stinking annoying <sighs> um, my kids have a window in their room that they can easily open my kids are a one-year-old and a three-year-old but there's this window that they can uh, just unlatch and then pop the doors open or pop the window open like that and they pop that thing open all the time and it is like so cold and they just don't care they think it's hilarious to throw toys out the window there's no screen on that thing either so at night sometimes I have to go in there and check on them and the curtain will be blowing because they left the window open but it's so hot in their room that uh, <clears throat> it's they can't feel too much of a difference anyways. If any of you guys have any suggestions on how I can keep that window closed, um, cardboard is not an option or taping it off is not an option because uh, they need sun in their room. So, and I I just don't know how to, how to lock that window away from them. But if you guys have any options for that, that'd be great so I can one, keep the cold out, two, keep them safe, because if they wanted to, they could jump out of it. Um, luckily, they just find it funny to throw toys out there for right now, and um, my sons are like best friends with each other, so hopefully they wouldn't throw each other out the window. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so if you have any ideas on that, just let me know. Um, our water here is freezing because it's cold outside so we're still keeping our faucets dripping um, just a little bit at night uh, but the water is so cold um, and we do not keep our heated we do not keep our water
water heater turned on all the time because uh, we don't use hot water that much unless I'm doing dishes or um, the kids are bathing. <coughs> Other than that, if we need hot water pretty quickly, we'll use my husband's hot water maker. It's uh, Zojirusi and it's, it holds like three liters. So we'll use that um, if we need warm water to wash faces or anything like that. So um, anyways, we have realized pretty quickly that uh, we don't know the size of our water tank, our hot water heater, um, but apparently it's like not big at all. My, I can get a bath for my kids and we have a decent sized bath for an RV. If you look, if you've seen the other videos, you've seen the bathtub, so it's pretty decent size. Um, but I can only get about three inches of water. I can fill the tub about three inches. So they have about that much water to like play in before the water just goes cold. Um, and that stinks really bad. There's another full-time family over here and they have an Atwood water heater and it just, it's instant and it's awesome. Um, if you can afford it, I would recommend an instant hot water heater uh, connected to your RV. Uh, especially in the winter when you're all you want is just a hot shower and you don't want to walk all the way across the RV park to go take one. Um, it would just be real handy. So I don't know what size ours is, but it's really small and it stinks in the winter time and there's not really too much winterizing you can do with that, but um, just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, we've seen our, we're in um, southeast Kansas, so it hasn't gotten like blizzard cold, but we've definitely seen some other RVers uh, winter, start winterizing pretty seriously. They put this uh, border on the bottom of their RV to keep the cold from getting into their pipes or under their RV. Um, super smart idea, whoever came up with that. Um, it's probably pretty standard, so I don't know if anyone actually came up with it. It's just a wise idea. Um, but if you're on a budget like us and you really want to keep the cold out from under there, just put some uh, plywood up against to cut to size some plywood and line it up along your motorhome or RV um, and it'll do the job and I think that it's I think plywood's cheap enough for you to be able to buy it and um, just toss it out before you go or if you are local and you have friends and family just take that plywood and ask if you can store it at their place so you can just save money there we did look online for some kids um, that would skirt the bottom of our RV and holy moly those things are expensive like mo cost more than our RV expensive so uh, there's no way that we could do that if you can afford it yay for you and do it you know um, if I could afford it uh, I probably still wouldn't do it <laughs> I'm such a cheapskate I just I cannot spend that kind of money on something like that. I would rather slap some plywood up against there and um, that only cost me like 75 bucks um, to do instead of paying thousands of dollars for a skirt kit um, that I use a, a season every year and not only that, I, we don't, our, our family personally does not plan to be in the winter ever again in the RV if we could possibly help it. You know, we got sent here to Kansas um, kind of against our will. Um, we had applied for Nevada and we were supposed to be working there and the weather would have been a lot warmer um, in Southern Nevada than here, but um, their positions didn't open up in time and so it was either this or Tennessee 
was our options and the weather for both is pretty much the same. So <clears throat> we chose here because it's, uh, you know, I just, I really don't know why anymore we chose Kansas because Nashville would have been so much closer to in Tennessee to where we would have been, but that's neither here nor there. So anyways, um, another thing is, um, we have a composting toilet. So we use a carbon for our toilet, um, to cover our BMs and stuff like that. So we keep the carbon outside in two large totes and I, I'm just really tired. So sometimes I'm not thinking clearly, but I had went outside to fill up our, um, bucket that we keep in here with our scoop to scoop into the composting toilet. And I left the lid off outside and that was a major, major screw up, especially in this winter time, uh, because it had rained one night. And so our peat moss, which our peat, peat moss is what we use, um, had gotten soaked. Um, and if you're using any kind of carbon, like peat moss, sawdust, whatever you choose to use for your composting toilet, you obviously want it to be dry so that it can uh, soak up whatever you're doing on your composting toilet. Well, uh, it had rained and by next time I, I needed to fill up the bucket for the peat moss, I went out there and it was frozen um, because it rained and then it got below freezing and then it's just, it had been really cold weather. Um, and I, I tried not to cry. <laughs> Because I was like, how are we supposed to use uh, our toilet now? Because uh, it's not like you can just go in a bucket and just have it like that. That's disgusting. Um, and it stinks really bad. Uh, so you want something to cover that and neutralize the smell. So I pretty much spent like an hour and a half to two hours running all over this very small town searching every nursery store whatever they had for peat moss and um, one nursery which is in the middle of nowhere uh, on the outskirts of town had peat moss for um, a ridiculous amount of money I ended up buying it from him but then as soon as we got back um, I opened it up to pour it in our containers and like dump out the frozen stuff and realized that the peat moss that I had just bought from this nursery was wet <sighs> he had, and I just <sighs> it's like seriously could this get any worse so unfortunately, um, due to being in our, the location that we are and not being able to travel very far, um, we had to use wet peat moss for a bit. So that's a little tip, winter tidbit too. If you are using a composting toilet and you have your carbon sitting outside in buckets like our big totes like we do, um, always make sure to cover it and actually and the future I'll probably just stick it in the basement um, but it's just such a pain to get in and out of there so I keep it up I just kept it outside um, like who's gonna steal a bunch of peat moss um, anyways major boo-boo on my part put the lid on and stick it far away from being rained on so that's another little tidbit for you so anyways I think that that's about the most of our winter rising thing we have decided not to do our windows and the like plastic covering um, so only because we're moving next week if we were to stay in the winter through the winter uh, we would definitely cover our windows um, in some kind of insulation or the uh, 
plastic stuff. So 